Hey, it's Justin and Corey here at Seaboard Marine, and uh, today we're going to show you how these uh, larger gears, like the 280, and if this is a 302. That's 280, uh, 286 and up. 286. This is a 302 IV. Okay, so it's the 286. Anything and up above that is a pressed on hub. So this hub, and I'm going to get a little close up here. You want to tell us a little bit about this hub, Corey. Well, this is a specific uh, Vulcan uh, hub. So if you're to incorporate a Vulcan torsional coupling um, that's going to bolt to the flywheel of the engine, this particular hub, there's actually two different sizes that we, that we uh, work with. This is a smaller size. There's actually a larger hub that accommodates uh, in what we call an E-type Vulcan coupling, which is a single stage rubber block uh, coupling. Now there's different styles. There's Senta couplings um, that use uh, the CFDS version with the four posts. Um, so that hub would be pressed on. But at the end of the day, either, whether it's a, a two-stage coupling or a single-stage coupling, whatever interfaces with that coupling has to be pressed on to this input shaft, okay? This yep. is a tapered input shaft. Tony, is it one, one over 30? One to 30. Yeah, okay. One okay. to 30. That's, that's the... Uh, yeah, the tapers are one, one in 30. One over 30, yeah. And uh, when, when we say pressed on, this, the way this works is, and I'll show a close up of this, but this, this, um, this outer hub has a little pathway, little tiny grooves. You'll see it once we pull it off for hydraulic fluid. And basically, we use this special tool here. It's called an SKF tool, very, very high pressure. And we're gonna pressure, we're gonna put so much pressure inside those little veins around the around the taper, that it'll actually pop this thing. It'll expand the whole coupler and pop it off. Right on the input shaft. If you once, and we'll show that in the video. Once you take this hub off, you'll notice there's small grooves in that tapered shaft that allows oil to get in there. Very very high pressure and allows that uh, that hub to actually disengage from the taper. Sand it down like we do. Okay. You might have to just push. Yeah, I would I would grind it. Right. Put it on something, spin it. Put it in, we'll never get it out. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's out. It's got to drop in. Oh, yeah. You drop right in? Yep. Yeah. It's the right way? Yep. Okay. It'd probably work backwards because it's just going to conform. No, it's going to press. It's yeah. going to crush. All right. Now, next, next okay. up we got. Okay, out of the way. All right, so now we're going we're gonna to put the adapter in. Teflon tape here. Now we're going to tighten this until it breaks. <laughs> back it off a quarter now turn. We're back it off a quarter turn. <laughs> <laughs> I learned it from you, man. <laughs> See the other one you say if you fall off a ladder, you're fired <laughs> on the way down. Fired halfway down. <laughs> <laughs> Just crushing the copper washer and uh, getting the uh, getting it seated there. Okay. I'm tough one tape on this too. And another copper washer. I think this one will fit without grinding it. You got another one? Yeah. Set it inside there? Yeah. Yeah, straight. Yeah, you gotta straighten it. Yeah. You see it? Mm -hmm. There we go. Straight. Moving the plate might have been nice. Yeah. yeah. It'll still go, huh? Should. There's a bend in the hoser. There we go. Hoser. I got cross so I'll just power through. <laughs> <laughs> it looks a torque will fix that. <laughs> it's 
So typically, the amount of pressure required to release the, the hub from the shaft is anywhere between, from our experience, about 25,000 to 35,000 PSI before uh, the hub will release. And you'll know when it releases because it'll pop very loud and it just shoot back, which is why we put the washers uh, in there to keep it from flying across the room. Okay. Safety glasses. Safety third. Okay. We ready? Yeah. So, get a close up of the setup here. Okay, so that's the setup. So we have an adapter for the smaller hub to the uh, larger one. That's the adapter. Got those in with copper washers and the okay, we're making Teflon pressure. tape. Now we take the tool and we start pumping it up. Okay, you can see here we got uh, zero, uh, 10,000, 20,000, 30,000, and then 40,000 PSI. So we're going to keep pumping uh, and hopefully there's no leaks. And we're going to pump until we hear it pop off. We'll know if there's leaks right away. There's 20. There's two. There it goes. Boom. Just like that. Now let's see what. What did it pop at? 30,000 PSI. 30? Yep. Yeah, okay. Oh yeah, it's it's free. Is that copper water? I want to show what it looks like. Yeah, there was no leaks. There was literally only about four pumps and she yeah, came off. We used to struggle with that. Take it apart. Put it together. Take it apart. It should come right off. Over tightening. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's off. And there we go. Yeah, go and get a close up of those yeah. uh, the splines on there so See everyone little, can understand what's happening inside. This is a little pathway for the hydraulic right. fluid to go in and literally expand. You hardly even see that the taper is almost imperceptible, but that's tapered. Try to get as straight as I can. And so you get enough pressure in there and you saw it pops off. And you might say this, the average push on is about three millimeters. It was, it touches the taper and we go about three millimeters past. Three right. millimeters in. And we'll do another video. We'll do another video as, uh, when we can, uh, when we have to uh, install a hub onto the, onto the shaft, which is a whole other process. But that just gives you an idea of how the whole thing works. Yep. All right. All right.